up, y'all? What's up? So what you guys are about to see is the panel discussion, uh, love and biz, uh, conversation with couplepreneurs. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. First panel. I'm excited. I'm just here sipping soaps. <laughs> partner ecom spaces they'll come up and talk a little bit towards the end of the event so you can learn more about this space they have um, our sponsor with us this year and have agreed to host us for all of our meetups so now that you've come to this meetup you'll get emails about future meetups and they'll be here so to get started um, well first I'll tell you a little bit about what inspired this event so I had a meetup and I invited some of you to come out and give me some ideas for events for 2020 and I got a suggestion that I should come up with some events that are themed with holidays happening in the month so I was like you know we should talk about love and business for Valentine's Day for February <laughs> and it just so happens the Saturday after Valentine's Day is the 15th so this is a perfect day it's so wonderful to see all you couples here who are interested in business singles who are interested in business as well and that's what this group is about. So if you're not already following us on Meetup, we are Atlanta Business Strategy. Go ahead and join, it's free. You can also find us on Facebook at Atlanta Business Strategy Meetup. We're there too, check us out. I'm gonna be live streaming over there as well. If you like to take pictures, live stream, fine, please do it. Hashtag Atlanta Business Strategy Meetup if you are posting anything. So I will go ahead and get started. So first I'm going to introduce our host today, Amira Hill, and she'll introduce our panelists. We split the panels into two groups. Um, so we're going to have our first group now, and then we'll have our second group come up after. And then we'll have a Q&A portion um, where you can ask any of the couple's questions afterwards. So um, Amira Hill is a music lover and a content creator here in Atlanta. She is currently a co-host on the R&B Ops Weekly podcast and dedicated member of rapper Louis the Fourth's core team. This spring, she will launch her visual podcast, which will bring content focused on informing and promoting a healthy sex life for young adults. Amira is also a student at Georgia State University studying journalism. You can connect with her on Instagram at amiraimage underscore. So thank you so much. Let's give her a round of applause. So starting off with Urban Eden, um, Quentin and Taryn Lewis are the co-founders of Urban Eden located in Douglasville, Georgia. The couple have um, been married for six years and started Urban Eden in 2016. Um, while interning at Urban Sprouts Farm, a black owned urban farm here in Southwest Atlanta, um, the couple learned about growing their own crops and selling at local farmers markets. From the first batch of handmade botanical soap, a true calling was revealed. Urban Eden's mission is to create holistic bath and body products that help maintain skin health. Their um, all natural products are plant-based, beneficial for all skin types, handcrafted and non-toxic. Um, Quentin runs sales operations and social media, and Terry runs product development. So give it up for Urban Eden. And so now we have Quentin. Um, of their bee farming business, Honey Bee Good, where they naturally house over 100,000 bees in the county. Lloyd Hartrick is a military army veteran and Ashley is a spellman of women. Um, they have been married for six years. They founded their business in 2015 after traveling to London, England. Um, Honey Bee Good specializes in all things honey bees the importance of pollinators to our communities and making byproducts that includes lo local raw honey, beeswax, bee pollen, propolis, royal jelly, and um, which are all products all made by honeybees that are naturally building skin and body. 
Um, their mission is to be an impact. Their goal is to create agricultural sustainability through teaching about the importance of honeybees to our food and also by placing beehives in our local communities, which include farms, schools, um, youth centers, and residences. So give it up for honeybees. How did you guys get to this point of creating a successful business while being in the um, with you guys are here? So, how did you guys get here? Whoever wants to go first. We know each other very well. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, how did we get here? Um, I guess we can start off with just defining what we, what we like, you know, as individuals. Like, Taryn had a love for herbs, and I had a love for like, business and sales and marketing. So we really just went our ways with our with our skill sets. Really, really dived in and head first and just learning learning our skills. Well, ours is kind of similar. We we were actually uh, met each other at the Urban Sprout. Uh, they mentioned their uh, their bio, another urban farm, and we really weren't the, the green thumb kind of people, but we really wanted to be involved in agriculture. So I figured. We have to do some way, somehow. So we went to London. Uh, I got inspired by a uh, bank called Lloyd's Bank. My, my first name is Lloyd. So anything with your first name on, you gotta pay attention to it. So I walked in and I saw a big mural of bees. And I saw um, a town, town designer of bees. And I was like, what, what are these bees about? So I looked up. Lloyd's in London is one of the most successful banks in the world. It's been around since 1776. And the reason why they chose to be is for hard work and determination. So and I said, wow, this, this little insect has all this hard work and determination. It's quite this multi-billion dollar company. So I started doing more research and we started seeing that how bees keep us alive and without bees we would perish. So anything that important, we want to keep really close to us. So that's how we got there. And I think it had a lot to do with our why as well. You know, us being a couple and wanting to, uh, we have four children, so wanting to understand that that's our why and, and generational wealth is important to us. And, you know, we, we, we got inspired by that and we wanted to do things. So I want to ask you guys, why did you start your business? Can you explain to you exactly what was your why? Well, we started our business, we keep bringing up Urban Sprout Farms, but that was a, a really good incubator for us. Um, we pretty much got involved with farmers markets. Um, pretty much Nuri allowed Quentin to do a lot of day-to-day -day operations, learn different styles of farming, um, harvesting, then going and selling the things that we learned how to grow at the farmers markets and restaurants. And then just when I was at the farmers markets, I was like, I want to learn how to do a skill. Like I want to be able to be here at a farmers market. And so I just pretty much was going through a book. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna learn how to do something. And I, I was doing jewelry. I had learned how to do like knitting and crocheting. And I just wanted to do something else. I was like, I want to do something that's sustainable. Because at the at that time, we were so like community minded. We wanted to be able to be valuable to a community. Like if we were, we would do something essential. So I was like, I was just looking through a book and came across soap making. And so I just started doing that and just you know, innocently just posted it on social media, just showing like, okay, well, I learned like a new craft. And then people were like, well, I want some soap too. I want some soap. And then, so I'm just, you know, doing it as a hobby. I'm just making soap. And Quentin was already into like social media marketing and internet marketing. So he's, and he already had a business. He was doing landscaping and um, putting in vegetable gardens. And so he was like, you should start a business. And I was looking like, huh? Cause I've I just been a server and you know, going throughout school, like I wasn't really exposed to entrepreneurship or I didn't understand it pretty much. I was, I, I worked at places that were small businesses, but I still didn't understand entrepreneurship. And so when he said, you know, start a business, I was like, uh, okay, I guess we, we will. But luckily he was already into it. And so he has like totally helped and held my hand along the way and just helped, helped it grow. That's awesome. Um, what made you guys decide to go into business together or what was the point that you decided like okay we're going to do this together well i think uh, we always we've always like talked to each other about our goals you know what we want to do long-term goals it's kind of always 
we started off as friends, so there was always that that communication there. Um, and then we just, I mean, I, I graduated from Spelman, so business is, is, is kind of, you know, what I do. So anything, any ideas that we can come up with, we can do anything. We put our mind to anything that any ideas that we come up with, we're like, okay, let me do the research on it. Let me see if it's something in my expertise that, you know, because if we're going to do it, then we're going to do it the right way. And he's on board, and I'm on board with what he got, and we just, as long as it's, safe and people don't think honeybees are safe. They're safe. You know, I understand. <laughs> you know, I understand. You know, I am hearing a story about one time you got stung. I get it. But no, they're really, you know, they're cool. But you know, we just took that and and, and I just did the business side of that. I, I, I did the paperwork. I, I did my research. We got mentors um, and went from there and, and it, it just worked. It always worked. When, when you, I guess, when you're a couple premier, you start seeing other couples that do the same thing you do, and you see this the same um, dynamic. Like, for example, like like Taryn is the producer of the products, and Quentin does all the paperwork. It's the exact opposite over here. I'm I, I'm the B guy. She does all the important business and uh, production stuff. So, all, all I would just say, just work together. Remind yourself why you're with that person, and that will help you go through your journey. What about your parents? Well, I, I do remember, like she, like she said, I had a business before. I had a landscaping business, and it was coming towards the end of that. And I wanted to get into like marketing and sales for like other businesses. So I'm like doing free work for all these businesses, and she was like, "Well, you're doing all this free work for everybody. Like, why don't you do it for Urban Eden?" And I was just like, "Duh, like why not?" Like, so then that's when I was like, "Okay." I went full time with Urban Eden and we started really working together. We was already working together, but I had my other business. But when she gave me the idea to do sales and marketing for Urban Eden, it was like, why not? And I was trying to do it for everybody else. So that was probably the best decision. It was just about, about patience. I was trying to go out and make money and you know, and it was like, you have a business right here, like do it for yourself. And that was the best thing she ever could have said. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So I want to get into the most challenging that you had in the couple, uh, couple of couple of uh, ah. um, and then what has also been like the most rewarding moment? The most challenging thing for for me is well, I'm a Virgo, so we are too. Yeah, you know, you know how we are. You know, we're, we're we like everything to be perfect um, before coming out with something. We want to make sure it's like done and right before we come out where he is like, we need to get out there right now to see what, you know, give it. And I'm like, no, you know, so I think sometimes you do compromise with that. So communication is a challenge um, in a big, in a, in a little way. I just had that bad, but, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I got my mind made up. <laughs> it's pretty made up. <laughs> I would say the hardest part was learning the skill or the art that you're going into because um, especially in our, our business, bees, we don't see a lot of people that look like us. So we really had to learn from what we call YouTube University, from square one, like what are, what are what happens in a beehive, the components of a beehive, uh, the products that they make. So we really had to start from ground zero and like she said, um, the biggest challenge after that was failure. Failure is the biggest teacher and I know when you see videos and people say that, you're like, oh, whatever. It, it really is, because you learn so many lessons from failure to success. So the failure really, really helped us get to this successful point and, and help us drive further. The most rewarding is when we go talk to the kids. Yes. And uh, just seeing how many questions they have, you know, and them being so engaged in what we have to talk about. And, and it's rewarding to know that we work so hard to know what we're talking about, because learning about honeybees and being black and being a bee farmer or a beekeeper um, is very rare. So we wanted to make sure we know what we're talking about, we know what we're doing, we're, we're very hands on with what we're doing. So that's the most rewarding part is if you can ask us a question, we can answer it. And you know, also we have the, one of the biggest challenges we have to remind us as black people, we are the originators of this business. This is not anybody else's business, this is our business. So that's what we're trying, our challenge is to remind us who we really are. Like all these things that we don't say, we say we're not into, 
these are our business. We originated. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we, we're really trying to um, overcome. I was pretty much gonna say the biggest, the biggest challenge is being an entrepreneur. Like we 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 encounter things daily. I mean, your energy, your business, pretty much runs based off of the energy that you put into it. So you know, we're at a point where we have like people that work work for us. So you know, people rely on us to have work for them and you know, paying them out and you know, just handling the schedules. We deal with stuff daily. But we were talking earlier in our most like challenging moment that we dealt with so far in our entrepreneurship journey was um, when we had a 4,000 bar order. Um, and around that time, we had kind of transitioned from working jobs into being full-time, both of us being full-time. And it was, it was very difficult. There were times when our bills were cut off, gas was cut off, water might have been cut off because we had to pay a bill, because we had to keep our Shopify store going because we had to put more money into material. Um, it was it played a toll on our relationship. We argued a lot during that time. Um, finances were hard during that time. And like even when we look back at our sales that we were making at the time, it's unbelievable. I was like, how were we surviving off of that? Which it was, we were barely, barely <laughs> surviving, but, but, we, but we made it through. And then I would say probably like, for me, another challenging moment was, uh, which was very humbling, was that we was, was finding out that like, just trying to balance your personal income, I mean your personal expenses with your business expenses and trying to scale. So we made the decision to move back with my parents like twice. And like, in my mind that was such a, like, it was so hard because it's like, you're married, you've been married for six years, what are you doing moving back with your parents? And, whoo, boy, when I say in my, in my mind, it's just like, what are, you, what are you doing? But like, you kind of gotta just keep reminding yourself like, you know what you're doing, just keep, just keep it flowing. My parents supported me, my wife supported me, so it's like, just try to make it through those moments, you know? And honestly, the most rewarding is being able to sit here and tell you about it. Like, that's rewarding, you know, you made it through. And it's all about just really not caring what other people think. That's really what was in my mind, was like, you stand with your parents, you're in the basement, what are you doing, bro? But again, rewarding to be here to tell you all about it, so. That's, that's probably the most challenging and rewarding. The most rewarding for me would be definitely like working with a, a great partner that um, does well in the business and just setting goals. The fact that we've set goals and we've surpassed those goals that our business continues to like grow. And it's just like we don't see a decline. Like we can't stop doing what we're doing. The fact that people actually like love our brand. They're loyal to our brand. People send us messages daily letting us know how our soap has helped them with various skin issues. Um, and I think that I've had people like, you know, shed tears telling me how I've helped their uh, husbands. I've had men shed tears telling me how I've helped their wives with confidence. I mean, I just, the, the interaction with the community, the community support has really been the most rewarding for us, I would say. That's amazing. So the question everybody wants to know, how do you mix um, business and love successfully? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, it, it, it definitely um, being, I guess, being in the military for a while, it kind of kind of prepared me as a problem solver, so to speak. But we all know marriage is not that cut and dry sometimes. So I would just say um, a lot of uh, compromise, compromise will be in order. Uh, also, play off each other's ideas a little bit, because somebody could have the momentum and then somebody else can add on something like that. Just keep an open mind, especially when you guys are spitballing off of each other, because that's when the great ideas really come. I, I know for a, a while it took me to um, stop mixing business and personal together. And sometimes in the class, because I'm putting my personal in with business conversation, and so I had to learn how to take that out. So you have to kind of learn how to split that apart. So it won't clash, and you, then you're arguing about something that doesn't even have anything to do with, you know, the end goal. So that was something that I had to work on. So just trying to separate business and pleasure. Business and pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the most important thing for us has been um, going on dates. I like to go on dates. like. We, I mean, we, our story is a little bit different. Like, we don't have children, so we've always been able to, like, focus on, on each other still. But you do have to be mindful to be like, okay, well, let's still focus on each other. Like, let's go and date. Let's dress up and do something nice. Because, I mean, especially when you work on your business, like, the majority of the week is like, okay, well, let's take some time. Let's take this day and actually, like, 
dress up, look nice, do something a little different. And let's not talk about business. He, he Quentin loves to talk about business at every point. So it's like, okay, we're not gonna talk about business right now. Just gotta separate the two. I mean, that's true. I mean, I'm, I am like super business minded and whatnot. Cause I'm always like, one of my favorite sayings is like to, and I said to my brothers is to build your garden before you build your house. So that's what I'm really, really big on is like, you gotta be able to build that so that it can take care of your house. So I'm always like thinking about that, but she really brings me back in like, yo, just cut off, let's just rest. So we, like our two days were closed, it's Sunday and Monday. Those are our off days. Those are our days where we really take self care. So like maybe go out to eat on a Monday when everybody else is, you know, when everybody else is doing their day thing, we like, all right, let's go out while everybody else is just uh, busy doing their day to day thing. So, yeah. Yep, so we are going to take a little bit of a 10 minute break. Can I have the panelists stay up here so I can take a quick photo of you all? And so um, we're going to give a little time for the next panel to come up. We will have a Q&A at the end. Um, some of the couples will be up here, some of them will be around the room, but if there was any couple that you want to kind of direct a question toward based on their business or something you heard today, you'll have an opportunity to do that. So at the, during this, this 10 minutes that we have, feel free to check out our vendors. We have Urban Eat and Certified Africa Vending. We also have um, Hayleen, uh, Miss Hayleen, which I think she's out of her car. She has brought some um, drink items if you want. A refreshment is very good. So go ahead and check out her juices. Um, she has provided that for us today as well. And then we'll come back at three o'clock to um, go ahead and get started with our second panel. So remember our panel, y'all stay so I can take the shirt off. And we can see them. Uh, let's do it at the e home space though. So next I have 
have the conversation party game. Um, Cassidy and ba Cassidy Bass and Dominic Jones are the founders of Conversation Games LLC, the parent company responsible for the conversation party, love and relationships card game. Cassidy and Dominic have been dating for three years and recently became engaged last year. Congrats. <laughs> They, are, they were inspired to create their company and card game after attending a life-changing dinner party with friends in Paris. Cassidy, who is a serial entrepreneur and project manager by day, pretty much runs the whole operation, as most women do, <laughs> while Dominic, who is an attorney by day, serves as a legal counsel and contributes to content creation and other areas of development. The two share a just-get-it-done mentality so whatever needs to be done concerning the business, they work together to get it done regardless of the role or title each of them may hold. So give it up for the conversation party. <laughs> Last but not least, we have the, ulti the ultimate entrepreneurs. Alvin and Charmaine Stevens are operating the ultimate entrepreneur empire. They are parents of four beautiful children and are the co-creators of the Ultimate Entrepreneur Magazine and weekly Facebook Live a YouTube series titled Chatting with Alvin and Charmaine Stevens. This weekly series addresses the challenges of business, marriage, and self-love while single. Charmaine is the creator of the Ultimate Entrepreneur, which provides business consulting, tax preparation, and credit services for entrepreneurs. She also hosts the um, the Ultimate Entrepreneurship Seminar, which teaches entrepreneurs how to be successful in their businesses. Recently, Charmaine was recognized as a 40 under 40 most influential businesswoman in the Southeast. Wow, congratulations. Wow. <laughs> Alvin Stevens is the owner of Stevens Premium Lawn Care and runs a mentoring program with the couple's eldest son. The couple's motto is, when you hear no, you need to find another way to complete the task. Let's give it up. <laughs> so I don't want to ask the same questions to you guys that I did last time, but I do want to know, how did you get to the point that you are now? So what inspired this business? Um, how did you come together to create what you have? All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, so, in 2016, my wife now, Kristen, came to Ghana on a legal study abroad program. And that's how we met. So when we met, of course, after her program, I was part of the program. So after the program, being from Ghana, and being born in Ghana and growing up in Ghana, I knew a lot of places and things happening in the country. So I took the time to show her my beautiful country and content as best as I could, and she enjoyed it. So during the last 10 days of her trip, of course, her parents came down as well to experience, of course, this beautiful country as well. And the two of us put together an itinerary and showed them the country as best as we could, and they also enjoyed it. So during that time, of course, we were also having our personal conversations here and there, you know, about love and other things. So they said that, wow, this is so beautiful. How can we get our families and friends to come and experience what we have experienced? And that's where the conversation started. So Chris and I, the next year, of course, decided to tie the knot. So I moved here in 2017, and we got married in 2017. And of course, we decided to make it official, making the business official. I'll let Kristen add the, the other part. Yeah, um, so I just really had an impactful experience while I was in Ghana and I wanted to share that with family and friends and I felt like, you know, this is something that the diaspora has to see, that they have to, to come to the continent to really experience. And so we were looking to find something that would set us apart from other travel groups. And um, me had done a lot of work in the business sector and he would see a lot of people come and visit Ghana for business only. And they didn't look like the people in this room, many from Asia, Europe, and he was like, you know, why are black people not coming to do business? We often come to experience the culture of Africa, but we don't come to do business and have a stake in the continent. And so um, on each of our travel experiences, we make sure that our travelers get exposed to business opportunities and ways that they can get involved on the continent. And so, 
that's something that we really wanted to make a part of, make it a part of our mission to get, to connect the diaspora in that way. Sure, but that's how we started Certified Africa. Doing the normal travels, the culture and everything, but at the same time, introducing the people that we bring to the continent to business opportunities. And last year, we took close to 100 black people. And funny, I mean, the amazing thing that happened, I'm sure you'll get to that question, was that after the trip, before the trip, we did a survey, and the majority of them said they don't really, are not interested in anything business. But after the trip, when we did a survey, so far, those who have filled the survey, nobody said that they were not interested. And in fact, this year, a lot of them are coming to do business. So. Okay, so um, just like them, our idea for our car game started uh, at a trip uh, to Paris, actually. Um, I had a, a friend that I used to work with um, and who now lives in Paris, and they invited us over uh, to their house for a dinner party. Um, a lot of people uh, that came to the dinner party, uh, some of them were for, from different countries, so it was all over. Um, I mean, pretty much it was just three of us from the U.S. Um, that were at the dinner party. So, uh, of course, there was a, a, a language gap, but a lot of them did speak English, um, and so we were able to discuss uh, the same, I guess, relationship issues that we all go through, uh, even though they're in different countries. They had, you know, kind of the, the same issues that we go through here. Um, and so we just weren't, you know, a lot of times uh, what we notice is uh, when we have, or we go to dinner parties and we go to uh, out to groups here, uh, that people are always on their phones and always uh, checking Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Uh, this time, we really were engaged in some really deep conversations. And so we thought when we got back, we were like, well, how can we come up with something to where people can kind of put their phones down and really focus more on conversation? Because we really felt like that is getting lost nowadays when people are just always on their phone and not paying attention, not actually talking to each other and valuing that time. So we were like, what if we just come up with a game to force people to go into those type of conversations? And especially um, when uh, you are either thinking about dating somebody or going into some type of relationship, these cards actually really kind of, it's not all heavy, but they ask tough questions that maybe you can always say, hey, it's on the card, sorry. <laughs> you know, rather than a whole interview, we did it like, let's play a game, but a lot of these uh, questions really sparks answers that uh, brings out to where it's like, okay, where is this person's mind at? How do they really think? Um, what do they think about these topics? And so maybe after that, you're like, you know, I've really got to know you a little bit better than I thought I knew you. So that's kind of how our card game came to be. The way we got started in business was really, um, it was kind of funny, but it was funny for my husband, Alvin, and not funny for me. <laughs> We've been married almost 16 years now, and um, we, <laughs> yeah, and actually it's baby number, it's five now, because I think when I wrote it, it's four, it's oh, five, and about three more weeks. <laughs> so if y'all see me up here like this, just ignore me. <laughs> three weeks to the due date. But at any rate, um, I've always worked in corporate America. I've always been the one that managed, um, went and operated and worked in correct issues in others' businesses. Um, but my husband knew, he honestly, and that's why it's important to when you're married to someone, to be married to someone that understands you more than the physical, what meets the physical eye. Um, he saw in me entrepreneurship before I even could even think or fathom being a business owner. And so he kept telling me, he was like, you're gonna keep going to those jobs and, and running those people's businesses and doing everything for everyone else until you find yourself without a job. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I just, I kept running from my destiny until one day I went to work. I managed over 90 something employees um, at a, it was not the Kia plant, but it was actually suppliers for Kia. And um, I went to work one day, everything was normal. 
Um, I went and did my tours, walked my floors, checked my people in, and I came back to my office and I got a note to like, um, you need to come to corporate. I was like, oh, okay, not thinking. They was like, bring all your stuff with you, still not thinking. <laughs> And it was so weird because when I got there, they was like, we no longer need you. And I'm like, what? Oh, it's like, where did that come from? So, called my husband. It was like, no surprise to him. Basically, he was like, you're going to keep writing and operating and working for everyone else until God pushes you out there. So, that was my jump. Not on my own. I literally was pushed out there. So, um, crazy part about it is the first year into business, I went ahead and started a business after that. My husband completely supported myself and our children and the household and everything while I was able to start the business. And uh, that's why it's important to make sure you have someone that supports not just themselves, supports the whole idea, you, the children, everything. Mm -hmm. And um, started the business. Fast forward, the first 12 months of business, I hit six figures, no problem. I was like, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> So fast forward, like we, my husband and I have been have been in business now what, about six, maybe six years now, and um, he got me out there. I was able to start several businesses, and then he went ahead and became a full time business owner himself. So um, our the way we started in business was just seeing a need. We knew we were gifted. We knew we were talented, and just seeing that need, there's nothing wrong with just you know understanding your gifts and your talents and not running away from them. And so we were able to uh, meet and use my husband's landscaper. Um, has, he's a brilliant man. Um, I do business startup, consulting, taxes, you know, I pretty much do it as it relates to business. So we kind of actually got into business by default, but um, getting in business and staying in business is something totally different. And I'm sure we'll probably dish into that a little bit later. That's true. Anything else to add? Just make sure when you Married or got a mate, make sure they fit that piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. that you need to complete a business. Because I don't know what she know, she didn't know what I knew, right. but I knew we could do it together. Right. And a lot of people don't know how to work together because they looking at what they know and that's all they know. Right. And they can't get it from their partner because they don't have the conversation that they need in the relationship to even start anything. So make sure when you got a partner make sure they be able to fit the piece of the puzzle that you need and you fit the puzzle the piece of the puzzle they need right. because if you don't land land that or you don't you'll never be able to work it and be friendly in the business right. because i take her information and i listen to her not just here at first because i'm the man or oh your idea not gonna work or she telling me something that i don't listen to so I, you know, we have to sit down as couples to make sure that we're listening to each other to fulfill a business because that's the only way to grow and you'll be able to come home to a home instead of a house that you're arguing about something that don't even mean nothing at the end of the day. I'm actually glad they brought that up. Um, I would like the rest of the couples to, um, <laughs> to speak on um, some advice that you would give couples that want to go into business together. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of experience people here by, by faces. Couples, I want to, first of all, I mean, a few days ago we did a video on, on, on Instagram. Somebody interviewed her and she asked a similar question and something just dropped in my mind. The fact that if the two of you sometimes, for some, whatever reason, don't find anything you enjoy about what you're trying to go into, that could be your biggest challenge. If, if it's one person who has the idea or loves the idea, but then the other party doesn't find anything, they can be happy about that idea or develop any type of interest about that idea, that could be a disaster along the way. So just to make it simple, if you're a couple and you're going into business, one way or the other, all of you must some way somehow find something that you can enjoy about that idea. And I, I believe you succeed with that, without a fact. Um, I think for for me, my advice would be treat your business like you treat your relationship. So think of it as your product or your service is your baby. So you have to nurture it, you have to care for it, you have to put your time into it. Um, your spouse is 
the same way you have to put time into it, just the same way you have to put time into your business. Um, you have to respect your spouse. You have to respect your business. A lot of the relationships that you, you know, develop in your business comes from a lot of a mutual relationship and respect. So I think it it really just goes back to the uh, foundation of of a relationship. Um, and if you have that, then I think you'll you'll be fine. Yeah, you yeah. So I wanted to go into um, how do you guys make time for each other outside of the businesses? Anybody can start. Why is Wicked going? We actually um, we filmed the reality show. What was it? Twenty seventeen. I'm on Fox, and we spotlight, and it was by default again. My husband came to the office, and they filmed that part. Um, where he literally kicked my staff out and <laughs> told me to shut it down for the day. It's date night. And um, he wasn't saying it in a rude way. He just was making it clear that you have to understand that business is business, but this marriage is first. And you have to make time to make time for each other. So once a week, Thursday nights, we shut everything down and just go, if it's not, just about an hour, just to get out, have some time to each other. Um, you have to make it a priority you know, to spend time together because that's what literally is kind of like the top of everything. It puts everything together and it holds like the glue literally to business, marriage, the children, everything because if the couple, the, the head, if that's not right, then everything that we operate beneath that is going to crumble. So um, it's just important to make sure we make it first. So for us, we make it a priority. It's kind of like, you know, the bills got to get paid. You know, the kids got to get fed. You know, you got to go have that time with your maid. Yeah, that, that's a big, the big, the big thing of it. You got to make that time. I don't care what's, what's going on, in, what's going on financially. You're going to have to make time to talk and go out. A lot of people go out to eat, but they still don't have the conversation. Just like they said, they, you, you see a lot of couples out there, they still on the cell phone, and they ain't even looking up, they ain't even looked at each other the whole time. And I ain't even asked a question of nothing. So they go home, and next thing you know, a big old argument blows up because you never had that time enough to communicate. So that's why, you know, I had to fall back and say, wait a minute, no, this night gonna be our night. I don't care what's going on, she, she'll, let, she'll, she'll tell you. They better get shot down real quick. You know, I don't play, you know, I don't care who you are. It'll be the pastor, bitch. We don't need no pastor today. We count a lot of people out there. So. Hey, you better go. So, you know, that's going to be your biggest thing. Yeah, your biggest issue. Make sure you get your time in, and everything else will fall into place. Yeah. 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 I think um, it's funny, like just like everyone said, you have to make the time. So um, just a real quick story. So we have a newborn. Um, we just had, so she's four months, four months old. Oh, wow. And um, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So last night was Valentine's, of course, or yesterday is Valentine's. So we um, had a babysitter, and you know, I was like, you know, texting my sister, like, hey, can you babysit? So she was like, yes, and I was like, oh, really? Like, yes? Okay. <laughs> so, um, so we got dressed, and then we were gonna go listen to some live music. But by the time we got there and got out of the house, you know, it was over. So we're just sitting there, like, what do we do? Like, we don't have no kids. Like, what do we do? And we didn't. I mean, it was like. We didn't know what to do because we hadn't really been out and you know so but long story short um the time we just went and we sat in the hotel lobby and we just had a drink spent time together and that was enough yes so um i think you know like everyone said you have to make time and for us our business kind of is like really fun so you we kind of <laughs> immerse it into our lives so um we have single friends, and we're always having things at the house where we're trying to hook our friends up with other people. So, um, so we play the game, and you're like, yeah, we you know we do the game now, we do the kickback, um, come over to the house. So we always kind of slide that game in, especially when we see two people that might be a you know a match. And um, so it's kind of like 
our game is our our fun and it's our business so yeah, that's basically what I was going to say. I mean, uh, our game uh, gets us out of the house so much because we either have to go on some podcast or go play the game at some event or something like that. And every time we go out, we play the game. Of course, we play the game millions of times. So it's like, you know, hey, whatever. But after <laughs> we play the game, you know, now it's like, hey, we're already out. So let's make something of it. So um, sometimes, like, just because of what the industry that we're in and the type of game that we have, we use that as some just us time. Um, I'll just quickly say, I think it's important to be intentional, um, to, to understand that a lot of times as people we get into almost robotic routines and it just becomes, you know, so second nature to us that we tend to ignore, you know, the needs of our partner or people around us if we don't become intentional we don't keep things fresh and new so it's it's important to kind of just take a step, step back and really examine okay i mean do we need to have a conversation about this or this could really help to liven up the relationship and to just look at it that way i feel like you know um a lot of people are just so focused on uh, work or or other things and they put their all into maintaining it when they don't do the same with relationships. And that's something that should be maintained literally every single day. You should treat it exactly like you treat a business. You pour your all into it. That should be the same with your relationship. So we live in the moment. We enjoy and face things as it comes. We always say one thing, that life is too short. We, we're very ambitious. We want to accomplish a lot of great things. But at the end of the day, life can be so short. So any opportunity that we have, we enjoy it daily. At the same time, if we have any work or anything that we have to do to accomplish these things, we still do. I remember some time back, a prophet met the two of us that he had a word about us, and he, he told us that our success is dependent on our being together. So we don't even play because we are the business. The day we have any sort of breakout, that's the end, of course. So that alone makes us every single day, how can we work what to have? What conversations should we have in order to fix it? I remember about three days ago, she kept asking me one particular thing over and over again, and I believe that I answered it. So in the moment, I was a little bit upset, and she was like, hey, life is too short. What's your problem? <laughs> and I, guess, <laughs> I just let it go, and we continued, and that's how we've been living. Of course, we're young in marriage, we're trusting, we go very far. Every day I keep saying we'll grow to a 90 and she keeps fighting me. We're going about 100. So we're trusting God every day and enjoying as it comes. Thank you. So I just have a last question for you guys before I open it up to the floor. Um, my last question would be, has running a business with your partner improved your romantic relationship? <laughs> Um, Dominic is an attorney and then I work for the city as a private manager so we already have demanding lives and we have two kids at home and then we have a business and then we get ready to open it's just a lot of stuff going on so for us I think it has improved um, our romantic relationship because we use the businesses for travel purposes and we can't take the kids when we travel, so well, that's the excuse that we use. <laughs> 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 so it, um, you know, when we travel, that's when we really have that time to really spend, you know, with each other. But, um, you know, at home, it's, it's kind of like we're trying to fit in when we can, but, you know. <laughs> I'll show y'all. I think. <laughs> Also, like, we, we started this business, what, two years ago? Um, and uh, at that point in time, we had been dating for just a year. 
So I was kind of not, you know, I, we were going and getting in, still getting to know each other. But I think this whole her saying, let's put this in, and make this work with our ideas and actually making a business kind of opened something different for me. I was like, wow, okay, she's on. This is something I've never had somebody push me to go to. So it was like, it kind of brought her to another level in regards to our relationship. It was like, wow, she's really trying to build something rather than just, you know, you know, taking us going to dates and just take, 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 rather than she's like, let's build something together, something different. And so I think, you know, that really helped our relationship. Yes, sir. Um, some of you may have saw me shaking my head when I went to ask the question. I would say that it definitely has. I was actually talking to Nee recently and I was saying, wow. I was like, we are really blessed to be able to do this because oftentimes a lot of people who may not be in their entrepreneurship, they don't get to see each other as often as we get a chance to see each other. We spend a lot of time together and, and some people only, you know, work is demanding, you get home, you have so many different responsibilities, kids, family, pulling you in all different directions. And sometimes people can only spend a, a limited amount of time with each other when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. But our, our business demands it so that we are together a lot. And we just naturally and genuinely enjoy each other's company in addition to that. So, you know, it really gives us a chance to connect and feel like we're a team, um, which is important. Good. So, a future child is not in yet, so we <laughs> have all the time to really connect and enjoy. Like she said, and again, like I said before, that once you have something that the two of you actually believe in, it gives you a reason to constantly come together to build something. And of course, with travel, if we, the two of us get to travel, that's like a honeymoon for us as well. So, we again are enjoying the moment as it comes. So I'll say the business has given us something in common that it that brings the two of us constantly together. And yes, it's approved a, a romantic relationship, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta you gotta like and love your partner. If you yes. can't work with your partner sure. on a personal level, it's not gonna work in business. And yes. vice versa, it's kind of a test. If you can start a business with your partner, then that's a true sign that you might be successful in a personal relationship. Amen. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. Does anybody have a question for our we're panel? Transition to the yeah. Some of our panelists are over here, so yeah. we're gonna bring them a mic <coughs> as well. Let's come up here if you, you want, want to come up. Yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, we can roll the couple mm -hmm. chairs we do have. If somebody wants to grab this chair. Hi, I'm Cartat. Um, I guess we don't really have a business as of right now, but he does music a lot, so we'll you know. um, My question is more so financial. Like, I don't think that any of you guys touched on it as much you know I want to know more I guess about it from a tax perspective and like how are you guys paying yourselves you know do you just kind of pay like and use your business card or are you actually giving yourself a paycheck and um, you know just how the tax situation works personal filing jointly just that sort of thing if it's boring sorry but it's important Um, there's two, that's actually like a two-part answer to that question. It depends on how your business is established and how you've established yourself in the business. Um, if you are a business that has like, okay, I'm going to be a I'm going to be the owner of this business, however, I want to be an employee so that I can still receive a paycheck, have taxes come out for income proving purposes. You know, in that rate, you would 1099 yourself or W2 yourself, depending upon how you want to do your payroll. And then when you file your taxes, you'll be able to just file just like as if you work for someone else. However, you, you are a person that happens to own a business, but you're listed as an employee. So in that perspective, you can do it that way. 
um, if you want to do like um, corporate returns, which is like an 1120, and I know I'll probably go over some of your heads because it's just, you know. But at any rate, um, if you do it like that perspective, basically your business is filing an 1120 return. Um, you're putting your deductions and everything like that on there. And then you would file personal returns separate from that. So basically, it just kind of depends on how you establish and structure the business, um, whether it's an LLC, whether it's a corporation, or if you're going to be a sole proprietor, things like that, um, you know, it would just depend on that. But I'll definitely give you one of my cards if you'd like to call me later, and I can go into details, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions after <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have a question? <laughs> My name is Sunny Speaks, I'm a local vegan chef here. And I have a question for this couple. What are some of the most challenging and most rewarding parts that you found about doing international business? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, for us, the fact that I'm from Ghana makes it a little bit easier. But in terms of overall, when it comes to Africa, bureaucracy is a thing. So you want to learn how to build relationships. Of course, we like to connect to people. So it makes our lives a lot easier. Because once you're able to build the relationships, it becomes a lot easier to get people to help you to do different things. So in the beginning, of course, I already knew some people from Ghana. But even at that, we're still venturing into new territories. We don't just do travel in Africa. We do personal businesses as well. So trying to build all of these things, we still had to go meeting after meeting, meeting after meeting, trying to build relationships. So when we need this, we have who to call. So when somebody travels with us and they want to do any type of business, we can have people on standby that we could call to help them. So it's been a little challenging from the beginning, building all these new relationships. But beyond that, it's very easy and very rewarding, I can tell you. Because here's the thing, the little monies that perhaps you may have here, because in America, maybe not everybody may have what it takes to build a business necessarily. But with those monies, as a black person, white people are doing it. With a, as a black person, when you bring it to Africa, that money can go a long way. You can get very good returns. You don't have to move to come and live in Africa, but you can do it from here. Once you build the relationships, have people you can trust, everything is going to, to, to go smooth. So that's what I'll say about that. Hey everyone, my name is Darian. I'm the owner of Max Power Laundry out in Marietta. And this is my girlfriend, Aisha. She's the owner of the Hot Tea Spot. She makes t-shirts. Um, this question is for any, any panelists. As far as marketing and getting your business names out there, what steps did you take? Was it more so social media? Was it word of mouth? What, what avenues did you take to get your names out there? Um, for us, it's pretty much 100, well, 50% uh, social media and 50%, well, 100% social media and 100% word of mouth. It's too, 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 too long. But um, social media, we do a lot of um, paid advertisements, so Instagram and Facebook ads, and we just run them. Um, so what I do is I, you know, look at um, other people who are like popular, like the Insta famous people, and I'll reach out to them and you know see how much they charge to do a video or to promote our products or just to have it on a podcast um, to play our game. Um, we partnered with a, a popular podcast out of Houston, and they were um, featuring the game for like a whole month on their um, podcast show. So um, because our business is pretty much 100% online, um, we don't have any. Um, I guess you would say we don't have any stores that you can like physical stores that you can actually go to to purchase it. Um, you can only get it from us if you catch us out and about or um, purchase it online. So it proves beneficial for us to have it um, pay advertisement. And then the rest of it is really worth it out um, because once people see the game and they play the game, it's like, um, how can I get a copy? And they instantly are buying it. Um, you know, family gatherings, cookouts. Um, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, we sell, we pretty much sell out. Um, if we have any stock around Christmas time, it's pretty much gone before Christmas because everybody's trying to get it for the holidays. Um, Valentine's Day was also a big one. We partnered with the W Hotel. Um, so part between partnerships, word of mouth, and social media, I mean, that's pretty much how we, you know, get the word out. 
So we use every means necessary, starting from in person. Of course, anytime I go anywhere and I speak, someone's like, oh, are you from Africa? Then I start advertising. So <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, social media, my wife does a lot of The next time I see, I see somebody has boosted, I see a, a business owner, like, who did this? She's like, yeah, I did it. So we do <laughs> Facebook ads, Instagram, I don't know if Instagram, yes, Instagram ads. So everything that we can come across, getting people to promote our business. And of course, the people that come on our trips, we make sure we give them a solid experience, just like Angel, she was on our trip last year, so that at least they can also testify and say, look, this is good, you want to check it out. So that's some of the things that we use for marketing. Um, another thing for marketing, and that's really my role in our business, um, content, man, you gotta produce content like all the time. Like, right here, we're producing content right here. Like, video is gonna give you the most results. Of course, like they said, running your ads, um, collect data. That's the biggest thing that you got to do today. If you're not collecting data, you like kind of slipping. Like, make sure your pixels are installed on your website so that you're just constantly collecting data, like phone numbers, emails, because you want to remarket to whoever it is. Make sure you collect data from day one. Uh, because we've created a product that's healing the skin, the body, with uh, through honeybees. Uh, we found a way to connect with our doctor's offices and hospitals. That's um, one way that we've gotten out there and therefore creating relationships with those offices as well as those hospitals. So that's just another way to get yourself out there. We have one more, well, not one more, another question. <laughs> Hi, again, my name is Aisha. Um, I have a question. I was a paralegal for 10 years, so I'm always spinning about the legal ramifications when you do something. So I guess my first question is, I'm not sure if when you start a business within a marriage, if it becomes community property, because the <laughs> business was started within the confines of the marriage. So my question is, is maybe something that none of you have ever, I guess, ventured into, but have you had conversations or have anything in writing about what the fate of the business will be if the relationship or if the marriage ever dissolves? Because it's. It's a valid question. Real question. <laughs> it's real. Um, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, realistically, not really. We, we, we really don't talk about it like that because we know our business is not really for us. It's for our children. So um, we can separate divorce or what have you, but we can't divorce our kids. So that's what the main purpose is about. So to answer your question, no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's a very good question. We haven't thought about it, that's a reality. But, oh, you have. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, but what I was going to say is, what I was going to say is, that's a very good thing. Because sometimes we underestimate things. Although we don't hope, people say maybe once you put out that energy, then of course something is going to happen. But no, things happen. So I think it's something good that we all need to look at. Not because we want anything to happen, but you just want to make sure we have things put together. Because yesterday, a guy called me and was asking me about his business and telling me the progress he's made about it. And he told me now he's expanded. He's added two of his brothers to it and they are very close. So he's telling me this and I'm like, have you guys signed a non-disclosure? He was like, oh really, I mean, like these are my brothers, we're very close. I was like, look, anything can happen. Brothers have fallen apart. So I guess spouses also fall apart. So that's something good we all can maybe consider. Not in bad faith, but for the good. So it's something we definitely have thought about um, because we're not married yet. So we actually have a contract um, because we all know how relationships fail in Atlanta. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we started, we started, we started ours, our business before I even had a ring, before we had a kid, well, before we had a kid together, and before I had a ring. So we put we put it on on paper. Um, so let me guys, let me introduce you to the attorney who. Right. <laughs> this divorce thing every day and how he's going back and forth about businesses so I'm sure he has a lot to say about that. 
Okay, so the reason why we put a contract together is because I brought it up. Um, for the fact that I have a lot of clients that I deal with that have the same situation. They have, they started businesses together um, and now they want a divorce and the question is how much is it split between the business? Do they have to cease the business? What, what are they, what are they going to have? What's going to happen? So basically if you start a business prior to marriage, it's really based on you have to show the contribution that you've made to the business. So you have to prove and, and put evidence to, okay, uh, I did this, I put this amount of money in, and so forth. So that's what you have to do. Now, the problem that you have is if you are, if that partner says, yeah, you're part of the business, but then you kind of didn't do anything and then you're not married, at that point in time, you can risk losing the whole business to that other partner. Okay, now, but if you started the business while you're married, that's marital property. Okay, so you're good at that. But unfortunately, <laughs> we got our <laughs> it is a risk. It's a risk. So, I mean, if I give any advice, make sure that you are contributing and documenting that contribution. Uh, have all those, all the money that you've uh, put into the business. Anything you've done, make sure that you have that shown. I mean, of course, we don't want to think that something bad is going to happen, but I mean, things happen. So you never know. Looks like we have two attorneys on the panel, too. So Kristen's also an attorney. So that's what she was like. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Vicky Me. Um, we're actually moved to Georgia. I just moved from Florida. Um, my question is, is that I'm a licensed CPA. My husband is a welder. He builds and repairs trailers, and we just opened a beauty studio. And I'm more of a risk taker. Like I, once I think about it, I'm like, I'm jumping into it. And I know that causes a lot of friction in our, in our home because sometimes my husband's like, like, oh Lord, here she go again. And I, I just do believe in. The more you think about it, the more you really probably will not do it with the procrastination part. And I know he's more of let's break it down and things like that. So I have found that to be like cause a lot of friction in our marriage because I'm more of the let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And he's more of, hey, do you think about if you do this and it blows up, like what is our next move? And I'm like, okay, we'll just make another move. Like, so how do you do or have you ever dealt with that in your partnership? <laughs> I would say um, there has to be a median in there because I understand like literally just jump but at the same time there has to be um, a great amount of preparation now not procrastination like I did no, don't do like I did <laughs> I don't know if you heard the story or not but um, I would say when you have an idea and it's an awesome idea and you think that you're ready to jump okay let's bring it to the table show me some beats let me see your proof let's see your plan um let's see how you you know how are you going to execute this thing and then at that point instead of him saying what you know what happens if you fails or things like that you already have something laid out you have an action plan you have your webs covered and that way you guys can kind of meet in the middle because i understand him being hesitant but at the same time don't be so hesitant to where you miss the mark by not go ahead and executing and starting and stepping out into it. If you feel like it's a great idea, then you should take time to do the research, look at look at it, look at every aspect of it and make sure it's a sure win. That way, if he come, when he comes to you with this weather, because that's like me, I'm like, yep, I got it, yep, I got it. You know, you just make sure that you have something for the bulk of what he's going to come back with you, like the, what I call rebuttal. You have a rebuttal for every objective that he may find, you know, with the idea. So we have one last oh, question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was, I was going to say, when we first got married, of course, we had various conversations about who would do what, who would do that, and how we are trying to learn about ourselves and all of that. Because I'm somebody who, like she said, I like to go for it. I like to try things. And I, I developed that capacity based on motivating myself and, and learning and building myself up, my mind up for a long time. 
So when I met her, that was one of the few things I, I told her. Now, she likes to do things to go get it, but a little more hesitant. So one of the things I did, which I always tell a lot of couples you can do, is whenever you're developing or building in terms of your mind and yourself, try to get your, your spouse on board. So one of the things I did was to begin to work on her, in terms of her mind, the ability to believe that things are possible and it can happen no matter what. In fact, today I can tell you, before I met my wife, anytime we're in the car, she's playing all kinds of music. And I keep telling her, this time, you could be using that to build your mind. Today, as I speak to you, throughout this year, every time we sit in the car, she's playing either Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, something, Deepak Chopra, something that builds her mind. So now, anything that I come up with, she jumps on, we can do it. And we go all out. So that's one of the ways that you can get your spouse on board with your ideas. The two of you build your mind to the extent that you have faith. We're Christians. I mean, I'm a Christian. So if you believe faith, you don't have to always see it before. That's Once right. you have the idea and you believe it, jump and go all out. That's right. Yeah. I want to piggyback off this great advice, you know, great advice. But um, I would just add, because um, I'm you in our relationship, same, <laughs> same. But I would say what I learned, instead of just jumping in, start off on a small scale, put some action behind it, so then your spouse sees you really enjoy it, and then it'll be easy to bring them in. Question for the Q and A, and then um, we'll wrap up, and then we'll have some networking. Greetings, everybody. Um, my name is Dave Monroe. Um, my girlfriend and I we launched Pan American Wellness Challenge. We understand that everybody goes through challenges in life, but that don't give you a reason to neglect the eight dimensions of wellness: emotional, physical, and another thing. When wellness comes up, a person will think, "Oh." working out, I work out, I look good, I got a six pack, but don't have a six pack in the mind. Right. So we launched Pan American Wellness Challenge, and my question for you all, you guys said getting into business and staying into business is two different things. Yes. What's the difference? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh, no, <save> me. <laughs> like, give me the mic. <laughs> well, I can, I can start, uh, I guess I can give you a short version. Getting into business is, I want to say it's the easy part, but it's the easier of the two. Staying in business is very, very challenging because you have to reinvent yourself, reinvent your business. You have to stay up with your, your following, your customers. Know, what, know your customers. Listen to your customers. That's very important. Listen to your customers. Because without the customers, you have no business. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. Um, like you said, staying in business is the hardest part. I mean, but one of the, like I was saying earlier, is collecting that data. You collect that data over years, you're gonna look, your email list is gonna be thousands and thousands deep. So that's what all businesses do, they just collect data. So to stay in business, do that. Um, I would say we've definitely had a points where we were like, are we gonna continue on? Are we gonna do this? But like I said before, the energy that you put into your business is everything. So you have to be the catapult, you have to be the catalyst to be like, I'm gonna put my all into this business, that business is gonna stop when you stop. When you don't give that energy, when you start to focus on something else, and even just talking about ideas and different things like that, you have to focus on one thing, have that core thing within your business, whether it be wellness, whether it be finances, whether it be whatever your spirituality, whatever, let that be the core of your business and continue to focus on that, continue to build that. That Once you create that foundation, then you'll be able to you know, continue on. But it is, you do hit some rough patches. It's like, well, can I continue on as far as finances? Um, if, if you're not getting customers, should you go a different direction or what have you? You're gonna face so many challenges. But it's just like with life, we deal with adversities daily. So it's like, do you and test? So it's like, do you continue to push on? Are you gonna step up to the challenge? So obviously, I mean, both can be very difficult. The ability for somebody to just randomly get up and say, I want to jump into this is very difficult. It takes a lot of mind work to actually jump and start. But when you start, it can be very rewarding. However, staying in business can also be very challenging. I always tell people, the day you stop learning, that's the day you start dying. So every single day, once you start the business, if you stop working on it or on yourself or whatever it is, that's the day you start dwindling down and very soon it will come collapsing on your head. So once you start, you're able to jump in, 
every single day is a new learning day for you to see how best you can take it to the next level. Maybe until you die, or until you move to something else, but you have to keep at it every day, learning new ways to be better as a person and how you can make your business better. I'm sure you, you'll do fine. Um, I'm, I'm the type of person is, um, I guess, how do I say this? Um, I'm the type of person that you would call a, a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've been starting businesses ever since probably high school. Um, but the thing that I learned is I'm kind of like the young lady in the back. When I have an idea, I just do it. Like, you know, no ifs, ands, buts, no procrastination. I look it up, do a little bit of research, and just do it, just jump into it. But what I've learned is every single business that I've started up until um, now has been because it's a quick way to get money. So what I would tell you is if you are in a business to get money, which is, may sound crazy, we need money, right? <laughs> it's not gonna work. You have, nope. to, you have to love what you do. Yes. Um, yes. You have to be, the focus has to be on either helping someone, um, I mean, it has to serve a purpose, you know? But if you focus on whatever that is, the money will come. You know, um, the people will come, the customers will come, because they see that you love what you do, and it, it exemplifies in you, you know. Yeah. I would say um, <clears throat> the analogy that I would use is it has to be Chris, literally Christmas every day in your business. You know how the kids, when they get up and they're excited, they open all the toys, and they're running around, they're, you know, just overwhelmed with the excitement and drive, and you have to do the same thing with your business every single day. Like you gotta get up, yeah, excited, motivated, because if you don't believe in what you're doing, how can you expect anyone else to? So the same drive and dedication that you put into it in the very beginning, that's getting in business, you have to do the same thing to stay in business. So yeah, that would be my um, input in it. Well, can we, oh, wait, that's okay. I just wanna say, we literally, started our business with one to two hives, and then they died. Mm -hmm. And then we started it again with another two hives, and then they died. So it's just about, we just kept wondering what we did, kept talking to people, and then five years later, we have almost 20 hives. So it's just, you have to keep going, keep going, and keep going until, you just gotta keep going. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like you said, you have to keep it, you have to love it. You really do wake up thinking about it. I dream about bees. I yeah, everything is bees. They are, they are so but it's, it's what we do and we love it. You just have to really love what you do. When you can literally tell your story with a smile on your face and people people can exuberate that energy. They can see, oh okay, you know, they love their business and you, you want to bring your customers, anybody into that into that aura. Give our couples a round of applause. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about why I selected these couples to join us today. And I came across them in various ways. Some, a couple of you were recommended to me through a Facebook group, a business uh, Facebook group. And I just asked the group, like, do you all know any couples who run businesses together? And they just drop websites and emails in the comments and I ended up um, getting you all that way, Charmaine and Alvin, um, getting our Honey Be Good folks that way and I was just, they were just recommended to me. And then I, um, I came across Conversation Party at BYOB Live Conference, bought the game, thought it was great and I was, my, so Chris and I, we go way back, we're friends from college. So she was like, oh, aren't you gonna have that Conversation Party Live couple on the panel? I should ask them to do the panel. I didn't even ask them. So that inspired me to reach out to them, and of course they were able to come. And then Urban Eden, I don't know if you know, I used to um, uh, work at Georgia Organic, so I heard about you guys from some of my colleagues there, so that's what made me reach out to you all. So these are just some phenomenal folks, good looking folks. This is my first time kind of meeting a lot of you. I'm like, these are some good looking couples, man. So 
I just want to thank you all so much for taking time, coming. Um, no one was compensated for this. So they're really coming to um, just share their experience and share their knowledge. So I truly appreciate that. mentioned that I'm the meetup host, but I also am an entrepreneur as well. And I run my own business, Angel Mel's Brand Strategy. I do brand strategy for small businesses, education, education, coaching. Some of you received emails from me about this event because you registered for a previous one of my personal events. So thank you all so much for coming as well. I want to take some time to shout out Ecom Spaces, which I don't know where Maria went, she's back. So I'll just talk a little bit about them. They're an amazing co-working space. We're here in the West End. So a lot of you may not even know there's a black-owned co-working space here. They have space right here that can be rented out for various programs and events. They also rent the offices out. Um, I might give y'all a little chance to chat a little bit about your businesses. There's various businesses behind all of these doors back here, which is really awesome. I come here and work occasionally, so it's a really great space. If you have an e-com MERS business, they um, have memberships for you to work out of this office, and they also have a shipping site in the back. So if you show, you might not know, there's a warehouse attached to the back of this building. It's massive, and they do shipping internationally, domestically, in large scale. So. Um, we'll make sure if you're interested, come see me. And um, I'll email the information out to everyone who's registered. If you didn't register, just go ahead and come see me and I'll make sure um, you get that information as well. I also want to give Miss Aileen, if you want to come up here, um, she's one of our sponsors for the event today. If you had a chance to go check out some of her drinks, if not, you will have a chance at the end. Oh, So Miss Haley, she also knows some of these growers. She's also a grower. So we definitely want to shout out our growers who are growing here in the West End. She's been here a long time. So let me give you a couple seconds to talk about what you have here today and your garden. I'm glad you say seconds, otherwise you'd have to stay here all night. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> most of you are kind of strangers to me, but there are a few people that's been in the farming business or in the food business or in the farmer's market. I know my girl here through Georgia Organics. We were just having conference mm -hmm. last okay. week and it's a year the same. So I am a farmer. I was born into farming five generations before me. Mm -hmm. um, there is a long story which as I said can't finish right now. But the question that I wanted to ask in a marriage and in life, but you have to have another plan, just like me. I'm a senior citizen now, so I'm just retired and doing my thing in the garden and selling my juices and everybody loves it and I turn it into a business. But my children, if I didn't plan ahead and send all of them to school, and they have another career after the market <coughs> took us all to the ground, we all would be on our faces. They had to go back to work. And if they didn't have a career or a profession, what work would they go back to? So, yes. So I have hibiscus sorrel and ginger. Anybody ever heard the name? Sorrel, Jamaica sorrel and ginger grown right up here in the West End. So I came back up and I'm planting and I'm growing and I've been on this property right up the street here for 25 years going on. And one day, I didn't own that land, we leased it when the market was down and we were doing, you know, renting from person. And then about five months ago, West End became gentrified, re-gentrified, or re-are, 
that I didn't even think about that. I didn't, you know, didn't grow up in that gentrification system. He wants six hundred and fifty thousand dollars for less than an acre of land. You see? So as you live and as you stay alive, you're going to be rich, you're going to be poor, you're going to be sick, you're going to be well, you're going to have a different stages. You're going to be married, you're going to be divorced, somebody's going to die. It's just life. Right? But you have got to keep on going. Pray, work hard, and grow. Thank you. So she's going to be here. So just to wrap up, I'm going to pass along the mic again to each couple. Let us know what you have on deck coming up that you want us to know. And if you are vending or doing a giveaway or anything like that, um, let's also mention that as well. As of right now, um, the next 60 days, we probably will be down. <laughs> we'll get ready to deliver, but however, we have the Ultimate Entrepreneurship Seminar that's held. This year will be held in Atlanta, Georgia. It's usually in June every year. Um, you can visit our websites, which is, um, our handles are at the Ultimate Entrepreneur. I have business cards as well, um, so I will be passing those out. Um, also, we have a magazine that's always available on our website. You can go to uh, CharmaineStevens.com and pick that up. Always visit us on Facebook, Instagram, at Charmaine Stevens, at The Ultimate Entrepreneur. And um, just come check out what we're doing. Um, so for us, you guys can follow us on Instagram. Um, come, just type in Conversation Games or Conversation Party Live. Um, Facebook as well, just type in Conversation Party Game and it'll pop up for you. So please follow us to find out what we have going on. Um, right now, we're not really doing a lot of events. Um, we are working on creating a new deck, um, thinking about doing a political deck since it's a, a big election year. <laughs> so, um, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but we also are doing a giveaway. So this is the um, first deck that we ever came, well, second deck that we ever came out with. The first deck was not so successful. Um, but this is the conversation party game, love and relationships deck, and we are giving this away. So really quickly, if I have time, could, uh, if anyone can guess the day that we launched this, it doesn't have to be the year, but the day that we launched this game, um, you get a free game to take home and enjoy with your friends and family, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, if you want to try it out. February 14th. February 14th. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 So you can follow us uh, on all social media platforms at Certified Africa, website www.certifiedafrica.com. Um, this year we have several trips coming up. We have one in July, we have one in August. September is uh, a mainly business focused trip where people can get into more deep into the areas that they are interested in as far as business opportunities. And then we also have our annual holiday um, trip which is in December so you bring in the new year in Ghana and so next year we're doing something really different and we're having a couples trip um, in September Labor Day weekend of next year where we, we will be inviting other couples for an intimate experience to focus in on business opportunities and just really getting to know each other and work on our relationships while we're in Ghana so you can check out that as well more information so just a quick one. As black people, I just want to encourage everybody that once in your lifetime, take the time to visit Africa. Mm -hmm. And when you go, look into some business opportunities because I bet you that could be one of your biggest breakthroughs. You don't have to come with Certified Africa, but at any point in time, just do your best and visit a continent. And trust me, you will not regret it when you look into business. Thank you. Oh, and oh, yeah, so, sorry. We have some items here that we brought from, from Ghana this year. So we have some uh, clothes and jewelries and, you know, fans. So you can check it out and then see if you can find anything you like. Thank you.
Um, yeah, we also have a table right over here on the side where we're selling um, all natural soaps, body care products. So everything is handmade by us. We also have a small team of dedicated um, members as well that help us make all of the goods. Um, we do have a store. If you guys ever can make it out to Douglasville, I know everything in Atlanta is far, but we are in Douglasville for now. Um, and we do have a store out there. We also make all of the products there at the store so you can come in and just feel the vibes and get some good aromatherapy just by walking into the store. Um, we also do ship. Um, that's one of our biggest ways on our through our business of selling. Um, so we do have our online store, www.urbaneden.com, but it's spelled Herb, H-E-R-B-N-E-D-E-N.com. And we're also on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Um, we do a lot of videos on Instagram just sharing different content about using natural skincare. We are big natural skincare advocates. I believe that um, as people of color that we should be using natural soaps. A lot of us know about African black soap. They use products like shea butter, coconut oil. We use those same exact things in our, um, in our soaps. And those are the things that are gonna help to nourish our skin, moisturize our skin, our hair. We have to take care of ourselves. And a lot of these major brands, when they created their products, they were not thinking about us whatsoever. They were just thinking about money. When we create every product that we create, we are thinking about us. We're using these products since we've started making them. We've been using them. So we are just like walking, talking advertisements for them. <laughs> and I don't think I missed it. Okay, like Urban Eden, <laughs> we know you very well. Um, we also have uh, health uh, healing products for the skin. Uh, we have local raw honey. We're located uh, in College Park area, closer to Fayetteville. Uh, we have well over 100,000 bees. What we do with our honey bees is all natural. We don't feed them sugar water. They eat their own honey, so therefore the products that come that we create from the or that come from the bees are 100% natural, which includes the honey, as well as beeswax. And beeswax, our products are, we have a bee butter, which is a non-petroleum jelly. So in Europe, petroleum is banned because it has cancer, it creates cancer in your skin. So we have a non-petroleum jelly, which is just beeswax, which is our beeswax that we have created from, well, from what our bees created, um, vitamin E oil and castor oil. So we will have that coming up in March. We'll have a sign-up sheet if you guys want to sign up with your email for a subscription for pre-orders. Uh, we'll start having honey again in March as well. Since we are 100% natural, our honey does sell out every year, which is one of our biggest accomplishments. But one of our downfalls as well, because we're working on not selling out, um, but since we are creating this product and we're harvesting these honeybees, it takes a little while for us to get things up and running. But we do have local raw honey. We have bee butter. We have uh, chest rub, which is good for cough, congestion. Um, and that also includes our beeswax. We also have lip balm, beeswax lip balm. We also are going to start getting into other bee honeybee products, which includes royal jelly, which comes from the queen herself. And that is used for fertility, so it helps uh, with making babies. <laughs> so It works. Look, like, and that's why the queen lives longer. She lives five years uh, versus a worker bee who only lives about 45 days. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's why she lives longer because that's what they feed her her whole life. Uh, we will also have honey wine, which is called mead. Mm -hmm. We will have that coming up in the spring, summertime. So, uh, well, yeah, we, we have a lot coming up. We just had a baby less than a month ago, so we're now getting back into the into the just of things, but usually winter is our off season and then we'll get back to it in the spring. We will also start having tours if you guys wanna come out and get to the hives um, and suit up and, and understand what's really going on with honeybees and why they are so important to our community and to our food. One in every three bites of food that you eat, honeybees contribute to. They read. So if you wonder if you will have this apple or this this vegetable or whatever you want, it's honey all day. So, you know, we really try to teach that and, and we'll be doing that in the spring and the summertime. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. And I wanna give our e space couple a little bit of time to talk about what they do and then we'll get into our networking. Portion. 
Thank you so much for allowing us to speak Yay. and uh, you know have the chance to get to tell you what we do here. We are um, the Wellness Depot, so we connect people to all things wellness, from mental health like life coaching to physical health like massages and steaming and foot detox to financial health, which is connected to your wealth, right? Your health is your wealth. So um, we also have like five classes that are uh, workshops that are classified and um, um, okayed by the FBI that we teach to the FBI that we also teach here. We also come to um, workspaces and uh, help with benefits packages like massage and um, and uh, workshops for retirements and things like that. So um, this is one of our spaces here. Um, we also have a space not too far from here called Westview Maker Space where we have um, where we have classes on pretty much anything from making shoes to making your own clothing line to printing and uh, establishing a t-shirt line. So we help with that as well. So uh, we are just very happy to be here. And so uh, we're having a whole lot of couples massages here. So the couples is just everywhere. So we appreciate you guys for uh, being here. We honor you for being here. And we wish much success to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Amira for being a great host. All right, so I'm going to turn back up this music with you all. We're going to network. You can network with the couples. For those who are here on vending, check out what they have. Oh, check out Miss Pauline. Um, feel free to see me if you did not register on Eventbrite. Please come see me. Thank you. 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 Thank you.